Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Hey, we've got another <laughs> another video on this press. Uh, I did the Suzuki RM250 crank the other day. I'm not sure whether you'll see it before this one or not, but I still had problems and it was almost like it was magnified. Uh, I think that this portion up here is a lot stronger. Uh, but in part of the video, when I looked real close, and I'll try to include it with this one so you can see what I'm looking at, but it started popping as I was installing the second half onto the pin, and I swear I could see this pop up between pops. And what I'm thinking is we've strengthened this and probably it used to push up here too and now this is pretty pretty rigid but now we're we're dealing with this and this is getting twice the bend because it's not getting bent here anymore that's what i'm thinking so my plan here and i've had a couple gentlemen talk about this in my comments section they suggested that i uh, beef up these uh C channels here and here, and I'm going to do that. I've got um, I've got some quarter inch, uh, four inch bar, and I'm going to cut these and put about three of them in here between these, and see if that won't rigid uh, make that more rigid. And then I'm going to do the same here. So I'll put uh, three in each side uh you know front and back here and front and back here and we'll see if that's going to make a difference but it it actually it almost actually looked like it was worse and that's uh you know when i was just uh playing with the 250 mx crank that i had no actually it was a 250 rm crank I was pressing the pin in and out, and of course, you know, the more you press it in and out, the, the more worn that hole's going to get, but it seemed like it, it helped. But the other day when I was putting that new, new pin in, that uh, the crank I was building, it was popping worse, I thought. Uh, give me your thoughts on it as, we, uh, as you look at that video. And I'll, like I said, I'll try to include it with this one also. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mark these off and get over to the saw and try to cut them all off. Then we'll uh, weld them in. I'm, I'm just running out of things to do. You know, you think that you've got everything done that you could possibly do and more stuff crops up. So that's our next venture here. Still popping pretty good. And go by hand now. Yeah. tight one see we're almost almost there now well, I was hoping for a little better news on the press but this may just be an extra tight one too Yeah. That ought to be. 
be about it. It looks like if I cut these to about five and a half inches, they'll barely fit into the channel and I'll be able to weld that so that they're actually inside the channel instead of uh, on the outside. Okay, I think that's, this is what I'm looking for. Otherwise I can just run a bead across the front of these and uh, so they're actually setting recessed back into the channel. And I'm, I'm thinking about three of them. I don't think I need anything out here. So I'll probably start about where I'm at there now. Put another one here and then one over here. And I'll probably end up having to modify my little shelf that I have up here. Because I don't think it'll uh, work anymore. But I should be able to modify it and make it work. But anyhow, that's where I, what I'm thinking of doing. So let me go ahead and get uh, what I need here. 12 cut, I guess. So uh, that, should, that should do it. Let me get that done. become a good welder. As of right now, I'll just have to be the way I am. You can't see it at all on this side. Let me, uh, well, it looks the same, but let me get, this is the back, and uh, I'll get it pushed back up against the wall, and then we'll take a look at the front of it. All right, guys. This is how my shelf was, and it would just go up here, and go right like that and then it would uh, come down and just set against the the uh, inside here but you can see that it's not going to but it looks like I can probably just get rid of that 
leg and then it will just set against the uh, the new the new pieces that we've got here so let me try that okay I was just able to take the ones that I cut off and add one to it and lay them sideways here and that still goes over that and will do the trick for me. Okay guys, I'm not sure what else I can do to this besides just rebuild it. But I, this is where I think I saw it flexing the last time. So that is what we'll be watching now. My light still works, yep. I just got those bolted to there and then I've got a plug back here and I've got a little clamp there for my uh, air hose and switch. So another modification. We will see if this one works. Okay guys, I'm going to try it again here. Uh, this is the side that I've been using. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the pin out and then I'm going to try it in this side here. Maybe the hole's a little more wallered out. Now let's just see if it, what it sounds like this way. nice and smooth no popping at all and I'm going to try to use the other side of the the pin So let's see what this does now. Well, I don't know. I think that's really done some good there. I'm going to try it a little by hand. If I can find the handle. And just see what that does. Because we're we're getting real close to being in all the way. Well, that sure feels good. There's a little pop there but not much. But once you you know when you when you start that pull you can, you can see it. But see we saw that before. Okay, that's it. Alright, let's uh, let's see what it looks like to take it back out. Oops, kind of got off center there a little bit. Okay, let's see what it do. Let me try the handle again. Pops a little more that way.
wants to do. Okay guys, I don't know what else to do. I've used just about everybody's comments that I've, uh, uh, that were left on the uh, comment section. And, you know, I may just be, uh, you know, at the end of the day, a cheap press is a cheap press. Uh, but, you know, we've made some headway. We really have. But uh, as you could see there, when I was uh, putting the RM 250 crank back together, I thought I could see it right here. Uh, every time it popped, it would come up. And there was pressure still on it, so it's not jumping off the pins. It's, I just think it was actually been in there. So I don't know. And I'm not sure whether this is exactly the right thing to do, but uh, I originally I thought I'd box it in both places. And uh, somebody, I think, uh, commented and said, no, you don't have to do that. Uh, just do like you did on the side and stitch weld some plates in. And that's what I did. And I, the more I thought about it, I think he's right. I don't think you're going to gain a whole lot over boxing that entire thing over uh, in. But I thought that it looked like it was less popping, uh, smoother, <clears throat> but I thought that the, the first time too. So we won't know until we put the next one together, uh, but it'll have to be a big one like a 250 or a 400. But then we'll know for sure whether or not we've uh, done the right thing. But at this point, a cheap press is beefed up pretty good, but it may still be a cheap press. So hey, thanks for going along on the ride. And pay, uh, watch for the... Uh, RM250 uh, crankshaft rebuild. Uh, I've got the part two where we're assembling it. Uh, so that's where that little segment came from. So watch for that probably this weekend. And uh, you'll just pay attention down here like, like I was talking about. And I think you can see it like it's, it's pressed down and then it pops and it comes back up. But anyhow, hey, thanks for going along on the ride. See you next video.